All right. Uh, Kobe, first question on the right side. Kobe Price, uh, Southern California News Group. LeBron, for you, an NBA record 20th All-Star selection. Uh, what has All-Star Week and specifically the All-Star Game meant to you in your career, and how has that evolved, if it's evolved, from your early stages to now? Um, well, I think as a kid, you know, growing up and loving the game of basketball and, you know, watching NBA All-Star uh, Weekend and seeing that Sunday game, um, you know, I always had dreams and visions if I was able to play the game at a higher level and, you know, give everything to the game. Hopefully I could be a part of that game someday. So um, it's just been an absolute honor to be able to, to grace the floor, you know, um, throughout my career um, and be out there with the greatest players in the world, you know. So a year in, a year out. So this is very humbling, very, very blessed. And it's um, something I, obviously I would never forget, obviously, part of my journey. LeBron, you missed the last game prior to the break in Salt Lake City because of the left ankle. Did you seek any treatment on it in the days leading up to the All-Star game? What's your plan in terms of minutes tonight? And how can you manage that and just your health in general to try to get this team as far as it can go the remainder of the season? Yeah, I mean, that's most important. Um, you know, and uh, yes, um, did seek treatment throughout the last few days, um, trying to get my ankle as strong and as back um, to where I feel, you know, confident that I can, you know, finish off this last third of the season. So um, I won't be playing the entire game tonight for sure. Um, I'll get out there, run around with the young guys for a little bit, then uh, shut it down at some point to kind of give my body and, op and my ankle, more importantly, another opportunity to, um, you know, to rest. Um, definitely going, I'm seeking some more treatment um, tomorrow um, going into this week because uh, we have, a, you know, quite a few days this week as well. We're going to play to the end of the week. Uh, see how that go. Um, but the most important thing for me is definitely my health, where I'm at right now, and um, you know where our team is leading. You know we're we're trending in the right direction, but you know obviously with our Laker team, it's been about health all year. So um, trying to do what's best for for me, for the betterment of the team. Dan, back left. LeBron, um, in year 21, how, how are the ways that you affect the game? How how has that changed? And in terms of both you know methods and frequency and how has that affected, do you think, the players around you? And has it given guys opportunities to maybe take on more roles, b bigger opportunities for guys? Yeah. Um, I think for me, um, you know, I can affect the game in, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, and, you know, at this point in my career, it, it's still the same way. I can affect the game with, you know, being, being on the ball, being off the ball, um, cutting from the weak side, slashing from the weak side, running in transition. Um, I have the ability to shoot the ball in space. Um, at more frequency, at more high level than I was early in my career. Um, so I've worked on that. But um, my mind is just sharper um, than anything. You know, it's allowed me to go out there and sometimes just outthink the game and not have to physically be opposing, you know, out on the floor for 40 minutes or 42, whatever the case may be, I'm out there. So, um, you know, I could pick my spots, um, you know, when I need to, you know, be more aggressive offensively or less aggressive and allow – you know, guys like D'Lo and AR to, to you know, you know, to run a team and I could play off the ball, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, being able to have a, a, a dominant threat like AD, being able to throw the ball to him and just kind of just wait to see what the defense is going to do and play off of that. So, um, you know, just I guess I'm just a lot more smarter than, than I was in my, you know, first 10 years compared to these, you know, these last 10 years. Standing on the left, Law. Hey, LeBron, uh, Law Murray at The Athletic. Uh, just – I want to talk about defense on the, on the day of the All-Star game. Um, you've been in the league for so long where th the three-pointer and the importance of it has changed. And I think we talk about uh, how uh, that shot is shot more often than how it's defended. So from your perspective as someone who, especially now, has to defend so many threes on, on your team defense, like what's your perspective on how it's changed and what you can do to defend threes? Well, I think um, each game is um, going to dictate what your defense you know, allows you to do or what you want to take away. Um, at the end of the day, NBA teams, um, we're all NBA players. Um, you can't take away everything. Guys are going to score. Guys are going to shoot threes. Guys are going to put up numbers. You can't take away everything. So you got to be willing. It's what you're willing to give up, not what you want to take away. So, uh, but every team is different. You know, every, every team's portfolio is different of how they attack the game. And if you do your, you know, you do your scouting, you do your research, you know players' tendencies, then you can, you know, be proactive more than reactive. Um, and uh, you're absolutely right. The game has definitely got to, you know, because of 
uh, analytics um, when that tapped into our game. It's more just like layups, dunks, free throws, threes. You know, um, a lot of teams are trying to shy away from the mid range. A lot of teams are trying to shy away from um, a lot of other things that when I came into the league, that was very important. Um, but um, so, you know, it's, you know, depending on the teams that you're playing, you know, the teams that uh, want to shoot 40, 50 threes a game, you know, the teams that want to shoot, you know, 25 to 30. Uh, you just have to do your scouting and be prepared for it. Tim, standing here on the left. Uh, to mount up CSPN. LeBron, obviously, it's your 20th All-Star game, setting a record. And for the last generation, you've been one of the faces of the league. And when you came into the league, there was a lot of talk about who was going to be the person to succeed, Michael Jordan, eventually, as the face of the league. And now questions started to crop up of who eventually, whenever you decide to stop playing, will be able to succeed you in that role. And I was curious, as you sort of look forward, however long it is before you decide to stop, sort of how do you see that playing out and who do you see as potentially being able to do that? Well, I don't know, because um, when I came into the league, I didn't, I didn't look at myself as the face of anything. Um, you know, I didn't look at myself as the next Michael or the successor to Michael. Um, you know, I looked, when I came into the league, the first thing I thought about was that I have to start over now. You know, I have built my rep in high school from my freshman year to my senior year. Um, from being a 14-year-old freshman that was 6'2", 180 pounds, and, you know, I was like, okay, well, how can I make a name for myself at St. Vincent St. Mary all the way to my senior year where I was uh, the number one player in the country? And that's the same thing I did when I got drafted. I did not come in with the mindset that I was the number one player in the country still. I came in with the mindset that I got to start over, and I'm just one of 450 guys. Um, I think that's what allowed me to kind of just build and build and build um, I didn't think about being the face of the league. I knew I was being put in a position that was, um, you know, being the face of a franchise, the NBA franchise at 18 years old was very stressful. And, you know, I knew the, the odds were stacked up against me and a lot of people wanted to see me fail. And I just kind of used that as like motivation. And, um, you know, but at the same time, understanding that I still have to be a professional. You know, um, I know it's a lot to ask for, for a teenager, um, but I wanted to represent my family with the utmost respect represent my city with the utmost respect, um, do it on the floor at a high level, but also do it off the floor, you know, at a, at a high level. And whatever came out of that came out of that. So, um, you know, we have a, a great young a group of guys in our league right now um, that's playing, you know, spectacular basketball and also, you know, are being, you know, great off the floor as well. But I don't think you just, you just say, okay, well, this guy is the next person to be the face of anything. I just, you have to just let it happen organically. And, um, and see what happens. But we have some great, great players in this league um, that can carry anything if they put their mind to when they want it. Standing on your right, Rachel. Hey, LeBron. I know you talked about the All-Star Game sort of in the breadth of your career, but I'm wondering about the particulars sort of at this point, your 20th version, 19th version. I remember your first All-Star Game, you saying, you know, you're looking around the locker room and Allen Iverson and Grant Hill and Vince Carter, and that felt so special. What is it? at 19, 20 times in that feels special in particular at this age? Um, being here. I mean, um, you know, you still get that moment where now I'm looking in the locker room and I was Steph, it is AD, it's KD, it's Kawhi. You know, you got Joker, you know, Luca, all these guys, you know, and that's just a few of the names. Those are the guys in the West. So, um, you know, so you still have that feeling like, you know, this is pretty cool. Like, you know, I still, and at heart and like deep inside, I'm still like that 18 year old kid that came into this league from Akron, Ohio, which is like, you don't really have many inspirations. You know, you, you gotta grab it from somebody and it's usually like a family member or, or a basketball coach or a football coach or a teacher or something like that. It's not many like people like make it to being on TV or, you know, make it to being, you know, doing special things, you know, um, that you believe is special. Like when you're a kid, you think like, you know, musicians and people in sports and you know you think those are the only special people but actually it's like my little league coaches and my mom and my uncle and things of that nature but um I still have that feeling still you know I was just clowning with AD before I came in here I looked to my left and see who was I was sitting next to I'm sitting in between AD and, and Steph you know two of the probably the best players that's going to play this game obviously we know what Steph is about we know what AD is about so it's just pretty cool still Tim, standing back left here. Tim Reynolds, AP. LeBron, I know it's impossible to forecast what you're going to feel like four and a half months from now, but or how deep the season will go for you guys. But when you think about the Olympics, it's it's 11 games at the most, but at the same time, it's five and a half weeks and a lot of miles. 
how then knowing how much you put into keeping your body as as great as you can keep it how daunting does that feel that i guess how confident are you that if all goes right you'll want to be there and you'll want to put yourself through the grind of it all yeah i mean um i mean i told myself before the season uh when i committed to being a part of the olympic team obviously it was all predicated on my health um, as it stands right now, I'm, I am healthy enough to be on the team and perform at a level that I know I could perform at. Um, but like you said, there's still time left in the season, still a third left in the regular season. Um, obviously, I don't know what you know the future holds as far as, as you know postseason, whatever the case may be. Um, but like you said, it's 11 games, but it is it's five and a half weeks, and it's more um, it's more miles put on these uh, on these tires, you know, and uh, you know so. Um, but like I've always, if I'm if I'm committed, which I am, to Team USA, then I'm gonna commit my mind, body, and soul to being out there for Team USA, being out there representing our our, our country with the utmost respect, and, and go out and play. Um, but the one thing that I know for sure, I don't have to carry the load. I've never had to carry a load on any one of the three teams that I've been on: the 04 team, the 08 team, and the 12 team. I just try to implement what I do best. Um, and, and be as great as I can be out there on the floor in the minutes that I'm out there. And, um, you know, I'm not sure, obviously, right now what the full team is going to look like, but from some of the names, um, I know I don't have to feel any pressure going out there to feel like I got to carry the team. Um, that's not, that's going to be a full 12 man roster that's capable of doing it both offensively and defensively on any given night versus any country in the world. Uh, assuming that you're closer to the end of your career than the beginning of your career. Oh, for, I am. I promise you. Have you mapped out what that looks like to you in terms of how many more seasons? And then, you know, does it end with the team you're playing for right now? Um, I have not mapped out how many seasons I have left. Um, I know it's not that many. Um, I also don't know if I will. I was asked this question a couple of days ago. Will you kind of take the farewell tour or will you kind of just Tim Duncan it? I'm 50-50. Um, I'm going to be honest because there's times where I feel like I guess I owe it to my fans that's been along this journey with me for two decades plus to be able to give them that moment, you know, where it's every city and whatever the case may be. And, you know, they give you your flowers or whatever the case may be, you know, and, and that seems cool. Um, but the other side of I've never been that great with um, accepting, like, praise. I've, it's, a, it's a weird feeling for me. Um, I never really talked about it much, but it's just a weird feeling for me. So to, to go in each city, if that's the case, I don't know. I've seen, I've seen Mike's. I've seen Kobe's. I've seen a lot of guys. Um, I just don't know how much I how I feel. I don't know if I will feel great about it. Maybe the only child in me, maybe. But, um, but I don't know. Um, but I am a Laker. And uh, I, I am I'm happy and been very happy being a Laker the last six years. And, uh, and hopefully it stays that way. Um, but I don't, have the, I don't have the answer to how long it is or you know, which uniform I'll be in. Hopefully it is with the Lakers. It's a great organization and so many greats. But, but we'll see. I don't know how it's going to end, but it's coming. It's coming for sure. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, LeBron. Yeah.